6B84 Pica. Essential, required, features of Pica. 1. Regular consumption of non-nutritive substances, such as non-food objects and materials, for example, clay, soil, chalk, plaster, plastic, metal and paper, or raw food ingredients, for example, large quantities of salt or corn flour. 2. The ingestion of non-nutritive substances is persistent or severe enough to require clinical attention. That is, the behavior causes damage or significant risk to health or impairment in functioning due to the frequency, amount or nature of the substances or objects ingested. Based on age and level of intellectual functioning, the individual would be expected to distinguish between edible and non-edible substances. In typical development, this occurs at approximately two years of age. 4. The symptoms or behaviors are not a manifestation of another medical condition, for example, nutritional deficiency. Boundary with normality, threshold. 1. It is normal for infants and very young children to put non-food objects in their mouths as a means of sensory exploration. 2. Many pregnant women crave or eat non-nutritive substances for example, chalk or ice. In addition, the eating of non-nutritive substances is a culturally sanctioned practice among certain groups. Course Features 1. Pica can be episodic and variable, or chronic and continuous. When variable, consumption of non-nutritive substances may be associated with increased levels of stress or anxiety. Developmental Presentations 1. Onset of pica can occur across the lifespan but is most commonly observed in childhood. Culture-related features 1. In some cases, eating of non-nutritive substances may be a culturally sanctioned practice. In these cases, the consumption of the non-nutritive substance is thought to have some health, spiritual or social benefit. In parts of Africa, and certain rural areas of the United States and India, for example, the eating of clay or earth, geophagia, can be a culturally accepted practice. Pica should not be diagnosed in such cases unless the quantities ingested are large enough to require clinical attention. Sex and or gender related features 1. The prevalence of pica is similar among males and females. 2. Although females can be diagnosed with pica during pregnancy and the postpartum period, a diagnosis should only be assigned if consumption of non-nutritive substances is persistent or potentially dangerous enough to require specific clinical attention. Boundaries with other disorders and conditions, differential diagnosis. Boundary with nutritional deficiencies, individuals who ingest non-nutritive substances as a symptom of specific nutritional deficiencies should not be diagnosed with pica unless the behavior persists after the deficiency is corrected. For example, anemia caused by vitamin B12, folate, or iron deficiency can be associated with a craving to eat dirt. 2. Boundary with disorders of intellectual development, the ingestion of non-nutritive substances is common in children or adults with disorders of intellectual development. An additional diagnosis of pica may be given, provided that the individual is able to distinguish between edible and non-edible substances, if the behavior is persistent or potentially dangerous enough to require specific clinical attention. 3. Boundary with factitious disorder and malingering, individuals with factitious disorder or who are malingering may swallow harmful substances or objects in order to present themselves as ill. 3. For example, prisoners may swallow harmful substances or objects in order to be transferred to hospital or to a setting that is less harsh or less restrictive. 
Pica should not be diagnosed in such cases. 4. Boundary with other mental, behavioral or neurodevelopmental disorders, individuals with anorexia nervosa may eat non-nutritive substances for example, tissues, paper, in order to suppress hunger. In trichotillomania, hair pulling disorder, or excoriation skin picking, disorder, individuals sometimes eat hair or skin that they pull or pick from the body. Eating of non-nutritive substances may also occur in other mental, behavioral or neurodevelopmental disorders such as autism spectrum disorder and schizophrenia. In all such cases, an additional diagnosis of pica should be assigned only if the behavior is persistent or severe enough to require clinical attention. 2. That is, the behavior causes damage to health, impairment in functioning, or significant risk due to the frequency, amount or nature of the substances or objects ingested. 3. 6B85 Rumination Regurgitation Disorder Diagnostic Requirements of Rumination Regurgitation Disorder 1. The intentional and repeated bringing up of previously swallowed food back to the mouth, i.e., regurgitation, which may be re-chewed and re-swallowed, i.e., rumination, or may be deliberately spat out, but not as in vomiting. The regurgitation behavior is frequent, at least several times per week, and sustained over a period of at least several weeks. 2. The diagnosis should only be assigned to individuals who have reached a developmental age of at least 2 years. 3. The regurgitation behavior is not a manifestation of another medical condition. Additional Clinical Features 1. In rumination regurgitation disorder, the regurgitation behavior is intentional, for example, individuals may contract the tongue or abdominal muscles or cough in order to induce regurgitation. 2. Individuals with rumination regurgitation disorder are able to regurgitate food with relative ease and may derive some reduction of anxiety or pleasure from the behavior. 3. Individuals with rumination regurgitation disorder often experience shame and embarrassment about the behavior and try to keep the behavior a secret because they recognize it as socially unacceptable. Individuals with rumination regurgitation disorder are often reluctant to seek treatment. The disorder may persist for a very long duration if left untreated. 2. Course Features Rumination regurgitation disorder is slightly more prevalent among individuals with disorders of intellectual development and autism spectrum disorder whereby it may serve a self-soothing or self-stimulating function. Rumination regurgitation disorder may be chronic or continuous, or it may be episodic. 2. In episodic cases, the behavior may be associated with stress or anxiety. Adolescents and adults may be less likely to re-chew the regurgitated food, and older adults may choose to shallow or spit out the material depending on the social situation. Developmental Presentations Onset of rumination regurgitation disorder may occur across early and later childhood, adolescence, and adulthood. Rumination regurgitation disorder can create a substantial risk for choking in very young children due to their inability to control their swallowing. 2. Culture-related features. Some cases of what has been considered to be psychogenic vomiting or vomiting as a somatoform expression of distress, particularly in South Asia, may be better diagnosed as cultural variants of rumination regurgitation disorder. Induced vomiting may be part of some yogic practices and should not be considered a sign of the disorder unless the vomiting exceeds cultural norms and is associated with distress or impairment. Sex and or gender related features There are no known differences in clinical features across genders. Boundaries with other disorders and conditions, differential diagnosis. Boundary with infant rumination syndrome, rumination regurgitation disorder should not be diagnosed in infants. Similar phenomena in infants, should be diagnosed as infant rumination syndrome in the grouping of functional digestive disorders of infants, 
toddlers or children in the ICD-11 chapter on diseases of the digestive system. Boundary with self-induced vomiting, rumination regurgitation disorder should be distinguished from self-induced vomiting. Self-induced vomiting may occur as a part of the presentation of anorexia nervosa, binge purge type or bulimia nervosa. Self-induced vomiting may also occur as a culturally sanctioned practice, for example, among practitioners of yoga, that is not associated with a mental disorder. Boundary with psychogenic vomiting, the differentiation from psychogenic vomiting, or vomiting as a somatic expression of distress, particularly in South Asia, is based on the fact that regurgitation in rumination regurgitation disorder is typically volitional, and intentional. Please like and subscribe.